Simpson, please. Is the continuing oil leak in the Gulf a threat to US-British relations, and was Boris Johnson right to hit back at US politicians' alleged anti-British rhetoric? The anti-British rhetoric, which appears to be coming from the President himself, saying he wouldn't have uh, Tony Hayward working for him, and he wanted to find out who's asked to kick and all that. Um, Jeremy Hunt, are you a bit dismayed about the way Anglo-American relationships are working out over this? No, because I don't think this is an issue between the two countries, and I think we have to be a, a responsible government in this situation and recognise that what we have right at the moment is an environmental emergency. I mean, people have compared this in the press to uh, the Piper Alpha disaster in 1988, where there was also a tragic loss of life. But that was releasing about 200 barrels a day into the ocean. This is more like 200,000 barrels a day. It is an absolutely appalling catastrophe. But Tony Hayward says that the Gulf is a big ocean and it's not going to, you know, it won't well, take up that much um, of, I mean, of I the think, space. In that. Hmm? You know, are you wise uh, to say that, do you think? I think how BP handled this publicly is really a matter for BP, but what we want to make sure is that they stop... It's a matter for everybody, isn't it? Yeah. Because they pay everybody's pension. Well, what matters is that they stop the leak. And I think what we have to do is everything we can behind the scenes to help both BP and to be in touch with the American government and the evidence so far is that they are doing something to contain the leak. It seems to be containing about 11,000 barrels a day. Um, but in the end, it's really important that we help them do that. And they have a responsibility to their pensioners, yes, but their primary responsibility now is to stop this environmental catastrophe. And but I think is, is President Obama being unfair when he castigates BP for the way they're handling it? Well, that's a matter for him. No, no, I'm asking you. Yeah, I know, and I'm saying to you that... It's not a matter for him. We know what it, he's it saying. Is, he, it he is a matter for him. But what, no, it is a matter for him what he says. But I think what I'd just say is that if there was an oil slick off the coast of Devon, I think people here would be pretty angry. And right now, this oil slick is moving from the coast of Louisiana uh, round to uh, Florida, and people are naturally very worried about their livelihoods, whether it's the fishing industry or the tourism industry. And, and frankly, my heart goes out to them. I think everyone who uh, lives near a beach or goes on holidays understands what a terrible okay. thing it is to have to cope with an oil slick. And I think we have to practically do what we can to help BP. I think that's the responsible and sensible thing for the government to do. I don't know how you do that, but Toby Young, um, was the president uh, indulging in anti-British rhetoric? Yes, he has been. And um, I think it's unfortunately um, the government, as we've just heard from Jeremy, has been very wet about this. Um, uh, President Obama has been dis behaving absolutely disgracefully. Um, he referred to the company as British Petroleum in order to whip up anti-British sentiment when it hasn't been known as British Petroleum since 1998. But it is a British company, largely, well, it, isn't it? It's no, a, it's not. It, it's got it, it's six, calls itself a British six company. Six directors are yeah. UK, uh, yeah. six US, 10,000 employees UK, 20,000 US. How is that a British company? Obama has, um, has, has called for... He said that he would sack Tony Haywood. Um, he is questioning whether, D, whether BP should be able to pay a dividend this year. Bear in mind that the people who will suffer if BP, BP doesn't pay a dividend are British pensioners. Mm -hmm. when, when President Obama talks about keeping a, bo a boot on the throat of BP, <laughs> BP doesn't stand for British Petroleum, it stands for British pensioners, because one in every six pounds paid out in dividends to British pension funds is from BP. Uh, this week, President Obama said that um, he wants to find out whose arse he wants to kick. Well, if President Obama wants to have a lesson in kicking ass, I suggest he tunes in on Saturday evening to watch England play the USA, where <laughs> Wayne Rooney, Stephen Gerrard, Emil Heskey, Aaron Lennon are given a lesson in how to kick some ass. <coughs> <laughs> the man up there in the uh, second row from the back, with spectacles. Yes, sir. I'm just wondering, with the President, with all this rhetoric he's saying about punishing the BP uh, executives for what they've done, Will he now accept that he's got to send the Americans back to Bhopal to face some justice for what they done with their chemical leak over there? He's, he's just saying double standards. Because they were all acquitted. <laughs> so I approve. I think the point about double standards is important because actually 8,000 people died in Bhopal and the US refused to extradite um, the American head uh, of Union Carbide and it's taken 25 years for, for them to even get the case heard in India. So yes, there, there are parallels but the substantial point here is that a terrible disaster has happened. We're sitting here in Plymouth right now. Uh, if, we, if, the, if you look at the parallel, it would be the slick from here all the way up to Norwich
reach extending up to Wales. And quite rightly, people in this country, regardless of which company it was, would expect compensation, would expect the company to clear up, and there would be genuine anger. And I think President Obama is reflecting that. And if it means having to use the courts, which he shouldn't have to, because the point is BP should be taking its own responsibility, it shouldn't have to be told. Uh, and so I think that an important precedent is being set. OK. You say in the, in the blue shirt there, in the bright blue shirt. I, yes. I believe that we should uh, go across there with, with, our, with our help teams, like, we, like a natural disaster in the world, being, being earthquakes and that, we should go with all our help and we should go over there and help them. Mm. Okay. And I, 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 the man there with the beard. <clears throat> I'd like to see the same passionate rhetoric being directed from Mr Obama towards some American oil companies and their behaviour in the Niger Delta. Ben Bradshaw. Uh, reminder that what we're talking about is anti-British re yeah. rhetoric, I was which going Boris to return, Johnson... I was going to return says. to the original question, which, is, which was whether this needs or should damage US-British relations. I, I don't think it does need to, and it shouldn't. I have to say I don't think it's helped by comments like those of, of Boris uh, Johnson blundering around uh, taking a personal pot shot at Barack Obama. I agree with Salma. I think this is a major environmental catastrophe. All that Barack Obama is articulating is the very genuine anger that we would feel in this country if an oil company had created this environmental disaster on our doorstep. Not just environmental, but it's impacting on jobs, it's impacting on tourism. Now, we can have a debate as to whether BP should or could have done more, but certainly their PR has been a disaster, whether we like it uh, or not. Uh, but it doesn't need to damage our relations. The American government today has made quite clear that that is, is the case. But I think politicians here, and that includes people like you, Toby, need to behave with some more restraint if we're not, I'm not a politician but then um, you know because of President Obama's tub thumping populist attacks on the company it's lost 40% of its value it's gone down in value from 112 billion hasn't 73 the billion. share hasn't gone down because of what Obama said the shares gone oh, down really? because of the but, disaster okay, the not just because of the disaster but because of all the threats that Obama's been making about criminal prosecutions and so well, forth I think Salma's absolutely right dividends. why shouldn't the polluter play I think Salma's absolutely, ben, absolutely right when something like this happens why should you pay or the taxpayer or the American taxpayer pay when they all come to make a lot of money from taking oil out the of the ground and when, when something like this happens they should pay the cleanup but costs. the loss in its share price does not reflect what it needs to pay. Okay, it, can, it, can, it, can, it, can, it can pay all the compensation it's required to pay and clean up well, the mess and cap the world again, without right? losing 40% of its value. Katie Hopkins. I find the whole thing really peculiar that we can't just group together, as one of the gentlemen in the audience says, and just sort of work out what we need to do from here forward. How do we look at solving this problem? And later on, we'll work out who's to blame, who needs to pay, and what we need to change going forward. I have three children under five, and I can tell you at home, when there's a problem, they sort out their problem with a great deal more efficiency than these guys are doing. Who, who, are, you, who are you saying is not sorting it out? BP, BP or the American the government? Oil company. He's working with BP, Obama, possibly Boris Johnson's not helping, the name-calling, the finger-pointing, he did that, no, Mum, I did that, no, she didn't, he hit me first. That's what's going on at the moment. And I just think we need to kind of grow up, sort the problem out, grip it, and then work out what we have to do in future to stop this happening again. Okay. The, man, the man in the black shirt up there, yes. It was, it was even suggested today that uh, the US should seize BP's assets and the last time that happened, it was actually called Anglo-Iranian oil in 1953, and Britain orchestrated a coup of that democratic government. Would the government be prepared to do a similar action today? <laughs> I think the answer is no. <laughs> and, and the man up there, uh, in the blue, yes, in blue, you said. Um, well, Obama might have been guilty of many things, but he's declared a moratorium on exploratory deep-sea drilling, which is more than this government yeah. has. OK. And the man in front, uh, in, in green there, yes, you, sir. It seems to me like it becomes an attack on Britain and not on BP, because yeah. what Obama's been saying, who is asked to kick and stuff, it, it seems like he's covering his own ass not to be kicked. That's okay. what's basically happening. OK, okay. I'll take one more point for the woman in blue there. Uh, me? Yes, you. Right. Uh, it seems to me that the, his ratings, his popularity ratings in America is quite low at the moment and the suggestion is that with the elections coming up in November that the talk that he's speaking at the moment is actually more to do with that and trying to make sure that the November elections work in his favour. Are you offended by it? About what? By the language he's using? Um, yeah, I think kick ass and that is not really the right way for the president to behave. No, okay. don't need to. All right. We'll go on. Um, 
if you're um, if you're if you're tweeting.